Welcome to Pello Talk. I'm Dave Pello. Remember when New South Wales Transport Minister uh, Andrew Constance banned the advertisement on the side of a bus that had the picture of a lady's hands over her pregnant belly in the shape of a love heart, calling the ad appalling. Appalling. It was accompanied by the text, a heart beats at four weeks. A scientific fact, a biological fact. No emotion, no manipulation, just the bare facts. No adjectives, not a human heart, not a, a lovely heart, no manipulative kind of length, just plain science. But Andrew Constance called this ad appalling. It was very hard to explain why he would do that. There was nothing wrong with the ad at all. But this week, there's been some developments in New South Wales politics which perhaps suggest at what one of his possible motives could have been. The New South Wales Parliament is getting ready to fall in behind far-left progressive activist uh, Alex Greenwich, who is in the New South Wales Parliament as an independent MP, that means not belonging to a major party, and they're going to let him dictate the agenda to liberalise abortion in New South Wales. Now, there are many voters in New South Wales who said, look, Luke Foley and his um, agenda to legislate abortion, deal breaker. We're going to vote for the Liberal Party because we don't want abortion. The Labor Party changed their leader, uh, but they never recanted that policy of, of legislating for abortion. And now we see just a few months in, not even six months into the new term of government, we see the very cynical move by the health minister and the premier to fall in behind Alex Greenwich, let him be the bearer of the bad news, but they're going to support him completely to legislate and provide the legal framework to, to remove killing your children from the criminal code in New South Wales. Now, I don't want to mince words about this. I'm going to use plain facts because there's far too many euphemisms in this debate altogether. The name of the bill itself is called a reproductive health bill. Now, reproductive health has to do with before a child is conceived. 96% of biologists around the world from the leading best academic institutions agree that a new human life starts at fertilization. So if you're making decisions after that, the point of reproduction is historical. That's, that's over and done with. You've missed your chance at reproductive health. That was before conception, before fertilization. What happens when you're talking about abortion is that's destructive health. That's not health. That's killing people. Yes, a new living human is being killed every time there is an abortion. Does a woman have the rights to bodily autonomy? Here's the other argument we hear over and over again. Don't tell me what to do with my body. Don't stab people. Don't shoot people. Don't poison people. Don't run people over in your car. This is society telling you what to do with your body. So don't give me this guff about your personal autonomy being somehow transgressed. Absolute rubbish. We all accept laws that tell us you're not allowed to hurt other living humans. And that's exactly what abortion is. So we need to be speaking some plain facts about this. The situation is now urgent. The New South Wales government is not going to do what Queensland and Victoria did before they liberalised abortion and send it to the Law Reform Committee for, for a review to say, what would the good legislation look like? They're not going to do community consultation. They're not going to get public feedback. They have gone to the effort of asking 60 or 70 pro-abortion ideological organisations how they think the laws should be changed. This is a foregone conclusion. The government is not listening. And you may have elected a right of centre government in New South Wales, but it's a tyranny to legislate, whether popular or not, the lawful provision for killing innocent living humans. In this episode of Pello Talk, I'm going to move very quickly through some interviews. There'll be three or four or five interviews uh, from experts, organizations that the government does not want to hear from, does not want you to hear from, as well as uh, one member of the public letting us know exactly 
how people like her think. There are many, many more people that need to be heard from in this debate. I encourage you to turn up at 9.30 on Thursday morning. Thousands of people will be gathering outside the New South Wales Parliament House in Sydney to protest against these laws being rammed through and against these horrific, tyrannical views being imposed upon the whole of, of New South Wales. This is pure and simple paganism. Not since the time of Rome have we seen a society so willing to kill its children as if, as if it's a normal, ethical, moral thing to do. It's absolutely ridiculous that this generation should be so enamored with killing our children. Worse than slavery, treating somebody else as your disposable private property is this act, which not only treats a living human as your private, personal, disposable property, but it intentionally and always has a fatal outcome. We, sensible people, Christian people, but anybody with a moral conscience should be fundamentally angrily opposed to a government that would dare to legalize the killing of our citizens in such a cold-blooded, clinical way like this. This is genocide, and the strongest language should be used to condemn the government, the legislation, and the whole industry that profits from the death of killing pre-born, innocent, living humans. You can tell I'm riled up. Beneath the article on my website with this video, you might be watching this on Facebook or YouTube or elsewhere, but go to davepello.com because there's a petition there as well. I want you to do three things. If you can get to the Parliament House, get there Thursday morning, 9.30, and, and let's protest against this ridiculous tyranny posing as law. It's a fraud upon the Parliament. Second thing is I want you to sign this petition and send it, share it on Facebook, social media, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere you can. Let's get as many signatures as possible to the Premier and the Health Minister saying this is wrong. This is a deal breaker. We will remember. Don't think because you've snuck this in early, we won't remember. We will vote against everybody who, anybody who votes for this horrific legislation. And second, uh, we need to actually call your local members and say, this is a deal breaker. I will not vote for you. This will decide my vote. As many calls as possible, phone calls to their, to their um, electorate office and leave that message. Send an email as well. We need to make our voices heard. And I'm sorry, but this is urgent. They're voting on it this week. We have to act now. But enough from me. Let's get to some of these interviews. Peter Barnes, thank you so much for uh, joining me on Pello Talk today. Um, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, David. I have to uh, thank you as a... Um, as the chairman of the Presbyterian Church in Australia uh, for taking a public stand on this issue. Uh, exactly how are you going to be publicly articulating your opposition to these laws and what would you um, ask other uh, Christian leaders around the state um, to do in, in the next 24 hours because they're looking to rush this through on Wednesday? I think the last thing we need to do is capitulate. The, the Bible talks about speaking the truth in love and that's that's our obligation and we try to do that as best we can uh, so it has to be true and it has to be done in a loving way so hopefully we'll try to do that I hope this will be a clear Christian issue the, the Bible says you shall not murder uh, and the Bible makes it clear that the child in the womb is that it's a child uh, it's clear science. The, That's right. The God of nature is the God of the Bible. It's the same God. They're not two different gods. Yeah. Uh, and anybody who thinks this is a um, a religious opinion that should be kept private uh, needs to debate with um, tens of thousands of biologists uh, from the best universities around the world um, if we're going to even be so silly as to exclude um, one worldview. Tell me, do you have any uh, advice for New South Wales residents who may be listening to this on what they individually can do to um, prevent this atrocious um, promulgation of injustice in their state? Well, all I can say is, uh, yeah, pray, make it known. Uh, this is not well known at the moment. Uh, we're just starting to get reports out now. Uh, contact your local uh, members of parliament and make good use of social media if you're good at that sort of thing. Uh, that, we've, this 
this is being rushed. Why is it being rushed? We're talking about uh, the hoping of the uh, a vote in uh, on Wednesday. You know, this is Monday. Yeah. Why is this such a priority? Uh, this there's something behind all this, and uh, yeah. So we need to act quickly, as quickly as we can, and do the best we can. Everybody needs to uh, speak up, stand up, and and make themselves heard, as um as as you've recommended. Um, thank you very much, Peter, and we'll um, look forward to talking right. to you again soon. Every blessing to you, David. Rachel Wong is the Managing Director of the Women's Forum Australia. Rachel, tell me, what is the Women's Forum? Uh, So Women's Forum Australia is an independent think tank that does research, education and public policy advocacy around issues affecting women. Uh, We liaise with um, the media, the general public and politicians to try and bring about um, really genuine, authentic problem and cultural change in Australian society. Now we've got uh, this, uh, it seems, an emergency operation in the New South Wales Parliament to quickly liberalise abortion. What are your thoughts? Um, well, well, yeah, it does seem to be an emergency operation. I'm not quite sure why it needs to be pushed through so quickly. Um, apparently, you know, they've consulted with various interest groups and they've considered it very um, very deeply. But, I mean, my organisation, for example, hasn't been consulted. Um, I hadn't heard anything about the new bill coming through until uh, yesterday. Um, and look, we're obviously very concerned about the proposed law reforms, which are more or less a copy-paste of the Queensland and Victorian reforms that have taken place um, last year and back in 2008, which effectively allow abortion at any stage for any reason, um, which is a radical departure from the current law that we have in New South Wales. Um, we're particularly concerned about the fact that the new abortion law reform is presented to be something which makes abortion a health matter, um, whereas in reality it is legalising abortions for social and non-health related reasons. So it's in effect making abortion a non-health matter, um, if you like. What exactly is the impact on women by liberalising abortion Um, So a couple of things. I think firstly, it removes protections for women and obviously for children against late-term abortions. It removes protections for women against abortion coercion. So when abortion is allowed at any stage for any reason, um, those kinds of safeguards and protections are lost. Uh, And the other thing is that I think it a decriminalised regime does nothing to address the reasons that that women are seeking abortions in the first place. So it basically sidesteps any of the real struggles women are facing in relation to you know, lack of support, coercion, uh, pressures in relation to study, career or family when it comes to an unplanned pregnancy. And it gives them this band-aid solution of abortion, um, which in turn risks exposing them to further harm. Um, but, but yeah, it does nothing to address the issues that they're facing. Now, you represent a, a think tank that spends all its time uh, focusing on issues of, of public interest as they relate to women in particular. And tell me, what's the conversation like in public and in politics and in the media uh, as regards to abortion? Is there any degree of intellectual honesty or, or is there an actual disservice being done to, to women by the way the conversation is being conducted? Um, I would say there's, there's definitely a disservice in relation to the way the conversation is being conducted um, at the political level and in the media. I think that the ordinary person probably doesn't really think about or talk about this issue so much. Um, it's obviously very vocally um, discussed in certain circles, especially the ones who want to liberalise or radicalise abortion laws. Um, but I don't think those people speak for the majority. Um, I think the majority of um, those living in New South Wales and the majority of Australians, uh, they don't want to see abortion at any stage for any reason. I think if they really understood um, what the legislation entailed, then they wouldn't be in favour of it. Um, And I think that if they thought there was a possibility that we could actually be given women more support and more informed choice, then they would much prefer that than more abortion. Rachel Wong from Women's Forum Australia, thank you for your time. Thanks, Dave.
Here's what 26-year-old Newcastle resident Alexandra Batley had to say about this surprise move from the New South Wales government. In the recent state election, uh, yeah. did you put uh, the Liberal Party or the Labor Party um, higher in your preferences? Um, which, oh, which side were you yeah. looking for to form government? Liberal, definitely, yeah. Was um, the decision to put um, the Liberal Party higher than the Labor Party at least partly informed by the Labor Party's pro-abortion platform? I would say almost fully, to be honest. So this yeah, is it's a, one of the strongest issues I feel about. So would you feel this is um, in some way a betrayal of, of that voting intention um, by the Liberal Party to now jump on board with Alex Greenwich um, and his tyrannical pro-abortion bill? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, yeah, but even the words that, when you listen to him speak, the words that he uses about it, like being an archaic law and we need to be more progressive and bring it to 2019, it's like human rights don't change whether it's 2019 or the year that the original bill was made. You don't, it doesn't change. Like if it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, they all use euphemisms for what it actually is because it's actually like I don't think they'd get away with saying that they support what they actually support if they didn't use euphemisms to kind of cover it. Joining me now on the phone is Dr Rachel Carling, um, previously a member of the government in Victoria and now the CEO of the New South Wales pro-life organisation Right to Life. Thanks for coming on Pillow Talk, Rachel. No problem. Thanks for having me, Dave. Now, what's going on? It seems like this has come out of nowhere all of a sudden. Uh, there, I know that the, uh, Luke Foley, when he was leader, was dead set keen on liberalising abortion in the great state of New South Wales, but uh, we thought that crisis had been averted with the defeat of that progressive agenda and government. For sure. I think it's been um, a deliberate strategy to blindside us at the last minute and try and push this through as soon as possible. There's been no community consultation, there's been no um, committee process, and um, that's just, as I said, that's a deliberate strategy the other side are using to make this as quick as possible. I'm particularly disappointed that a Liberal uh, Health Minister is backing this bill and by all reports has supervised the drafting of the bill, which means basically that he's given um, resources to putting this bill together. That's a really scary thought. They actually talk about this uh, bill as uh, something that's entirely to do with women and women's health. And I'm sure I would agree with you and, and with each other that we're very concerned about women's health. Are women the only living humans affected by the abortion decision? There are two people involved, the mother, and I deliberately like to use the term mother, and the unborn child. And there are horrific physical consequences for mothers who have abortions, to be honest as well, that the other side just simply ignore um, under the guise of healthcare, which is just staggers me, to be honest. But of course, out of this debate, we often forget about the pre-born child. Dr. Rachel Carling, uh, what would you suggest the average New South Wales voter listening to you now should do today? as soon as possible uh, with regards to contacting their local member. What should they say and how should they contact them? If you're living in New South Wales, I think it's really important to get on the phone to your local member, ask them what their opinion on the bill is. You probably won't get through to them, to be honest, um, particularly because they're sitting on Tuesday. Uh, but ask their staff, where are they going to vote? And urge them that how they vote on this bill will affect the way you vote at the next election. It's really important. They're really trying to rush this through at the beginning of term to ensure that people forget about this when they go to election day in three and a half years' time. And we need to make sure that MPs know that we are not going to forget the way they vote. It would be great to have as many people as possible coming on Thursday. This is the day that we believe that the debate on the bill will start. It's very hard to get exact intel on um, a private member's bill, but that's what's coming in at the moment. And we would like to get as many people as possible in front of Parliament House from 9.30 in the morning. Parliament starts at 10 o'clock, so we want people in Parliament, the MPs in Parliament, to hear us outside uh, and hear our opinion very clearly. 
think 9.30 Thursday morning, meeting out the front of Parliament House to let um, the New South Wales parliamentarians know that uh, New South Wales voters are opposed to killing pre-born living humans. Absolutely. We, I don't know why this is I, I will be sense. there. And, oh, nor do I. But um, apparently we're in the minority view. I don't actually believe we are. That's just how it's being portrayed. And I think this, this is also a really good consciousness raising issue. If we get enough people there, the media will report this. So we need, quite honestly, Dave, we need a thousand people to be turning up. It is short notice, but we all need to be rallying around this and make sure that the MPs inside, the ones who are going to vote, know that we do not agree with what they're doing. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel, and um, best of luck organising that. Hopefully everybody's um, able to uh, drop what they're doing and make this happen. And it's uh, very unfortunate that the government uh, has put them in this position uh, where they have to do that. Um, but have to is is the case. Have to, they must. So um, all the best, and um, we'll be uh, praying for a good outcome um, around the rest of Australia and uh, in New South Wales. We'll be adding our voices to yours. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Joining me now is Paul Hanrahan from Family Life International. He's the executive director and he's got seven years at the helm there and a lifetime of experience campaigning for life. Is that correct, Paul? No, sorry. I shouldn't have interrupted then. I'm sorry, nine actually now. Nine? Oh, you've got to update your bio on the website. Uh, I, uh, I sort of that immediately, as you said, seven. Nine. <laughs> Oh, very good. 25 but, years plus in pro-life, right? So. Uh, there's a lot of people in New South Wales who voted for a party which they thought was right of centre and is at the moment throwing their immense weight and the immense currency they've got for political agendas behind a progressive, radical left agenda to liberalise abortion laws in the state of New South Wales. Tell me some of your yeah. insights on this travesty unfolding this week. Absolutely. Well, we knew this was coming. There have been um, many previous attempts to decriminalise abortion in New South Wales and all of them unsuccessful. The most recent being just a couple of years ago with Greens uh, Upper House member Maureen Faruqui, mm -hmm. who uh, had also included safe access zones in that legislation. That was defeated in the Upper House. Um, but we have a different makeup in this parliament, um, which was formed after the March election here in New South Wales and we'll sit for the next four years. Mm -hmm. And we don't have those numbers in the upper house. Um, uh, last year, we had the introduction of safe access zones around abortion mills here in New South Wales, whilst those abortion mills were still technically illegal, what they were, what they were doing, or certainly potentially what they were doing was illegal, mm -hmm. even given the most liberal interpretation of laws that apply here. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we have a situation where it would have only been possible to defeat this bill if the government had um, taken the position that they don't like it and we're going to vote as a block against it. That was the only way we had a chance of winning. A conscience vote, so-called, a free vote um, by members of the entire parliament will, have, will mean a, a success for this bill and given now that the Nationals member Trevor Khan, Upper House member, and um, Health Minister Braz, Brad Hazard have put their support to it and have collaborated in the forming of this bill, well, that's not going to happen. And so it's just a matter of time before New South Wales will be the last state to decriminalise abortion, which is a great travesty. And um, uh, where we go to from here is really the question, I suppose, Dave. Do you think it's, uh, I, I don't want to be pessimistic. I, I don't want to throw our hands up and in which case we should all just, I guess, stop talking um, yeah. if it's a foregone conclusion. And the probabilities may be against us, but I mean, we probably said the same thing about the federal election and we saw a miracle outcome. Um, the, the state of uh, the, child, the nation's pre-born children would have been a lot worse under a Bill Shorten government than it is under the current uh, um, government. Um, so what should we do? Uh, what is the best strategy forward? What's the best path forward that will give us the best chances um, 
even if we go down swinging, um, what do we have to do to bear witness to the sanctity of life and to let our members of parliament um, know what they should be doing? Yeah, they're all good points. And, and of course, we should keep swinging. Um, uh, Christians don't give in and um, every soul matters. So the two things we can do are to keep talking and to t keep making our views known, and especially as far as we can in the public domain. And we also should pray. Um, and uh, we should, as the old saying goes, work like everything depended on us and pray like everything depends on God, which yeah. is what it was. <laughs> yes. So, uh, we, there will be lots of people who, at least this is an, this is an opportunity to have a debate publicly about abortion and many people may in that case then, um, change their views and yes. learn something about the horrors of abortion and mm. where we are as a society with that. And that's the beginning of the road to progress, the road to turning it all around. Yeah. In the United States, where they've been battling this for as long as we have here, yes, more successfully now, and are starting. Well, they ended up worse than we have been, um, where abortion was technically legal to full term, and mm -hmm. where full term abortions were done, and where many horrors happened, and um, they got to the stage of a million abortions a year plus, mm -hmm. and um, yep. we're probably pretty close to the stage now where even though these laws in enacted around the country over the last several years and being proposed in New South Wales, facilitate easy abortions up to 20 or 22 weeks. Yes. Um, there isn't really much difficulty in someone past those points being able to obtain an, an abortion. Having two doctors declare that it's, uh, they, they recommend it and it's um, okay in the circumstances won't be difficult. It's not a big deal, even if they don't. Uh, if New South Wales's laws are going to be based on Queensland and Victoria's in Queensland, there is no legislated penalty if a doctor fails to get a second doctor's approval and consent and procures a full-term abortion. Uh, no, the, right. the, the provision might as well not be there. Correct. They'll get a slap on the wrist from the state medical association, and uh, they can kill another person without right. without punishment. They, they, they make sure that basic, so effectively we've got abortion to term mm. that, that should be made clear to people. They'll argue that they've got all these safety provisions like they always do, but they don't. This is a radical hard line. Killing people isn't uh, safe. Yeah, that's right. That's, there's there's no safe way to kill people. It always ends up fatal. Yeah. I think the um, imperative is on us to change the culture to the point where uh, a pro-abortion politician is as rare as a pro-slavery politician because both yeah. of them are abominations in God's sight yeah. and, and even in a honest ethicist's sight, they're a violation of fundamental human rights. Absolutely right. And look, the other thing is, and they've been softening people up with this story, that doctors in New South Wales aren't sure of where they stand and fear being prosecuted. That's a lie. Yeah, it's total load of codswallop. But the last one prosecuted was Sue Man Sued in 2006, and the most radical supporter of abortion would recognise the terrible things that she Malpractice. Done. Yeah. The malpractice absolutely was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Before that, we go back to 1980. That wasn't an was abortion done. issue. That was a professional issue. She was pathetic yeah. and horrific. That's professional standards issue, absolutely right. Mm. And before that, you have to go back to 1980 for anyone to be prosecuted, and it was a yep. similar story. That's just not true. That's that that idea that doctors fear yep. being prosecuted is a lie. Yes. That women fear being prosecuted, that's also a lie. Yep. Medical abortions and surgical abortions are freely available in New South Wales, right up to the current laws provisions of twenty two weeks. Absolutely. What's the current um, rate of abortion in New South Wales at best estimates? Thirty five thousand. Well, um, it doesn't seem exactly rare or difficult if 35,000 women are having abortions each year and 0% are getting prosecuted for that. Correct. And we've had it for, you know, 40 plus, 45 plus years right now. So mm -hmm. how is that even 
incredible. So just on that, their, their selling points for this bill, yep. people would, other members of parliament should distrust them and should not support this bill. Even if there was one every year, that's one in 35,000. That's called a statistical anomaly, not a pattern and not a fact. It's, it's a lie, yeah, as you've well said. We also know many women are coerced into abortions and abortion mills don't care if that's the case. They care right. about the money they make. They've been caught out time and time again. And there are no end of instances. We can run the actual individuals who are coerced into, into it before the members of parliament. Yep. We have done those things in the past. Well, they, it made recent headlines uh, one year, two years ago. Miss X paid $50,000 by an NRL player to have an abortion she didn't want to have. Literally bullied, coerced. Not, not by the player, domestic by, violence. By, that, by that club. Right. It was the collusion of everyone involved with that club and those yep. players yep. that was behind that. It was the disgrace. That is the that is the anti woman agenda going on here. Not yes. not those trying to preserve the the sanctity of motherhood, the sanctity of life, fundamental human rights, uh, yep. the the mental and emotional health of this. Now they pretend that um, the claims of abortion regret have been debunked. We, we, they don't provide any evidence. They just do a throwaway line. Oh, that's been debunked. And in other words, they're not going to, not going to talk with that, uh, with that topic. What are your, um, what's the knowledge of your studies and even anecdotal experience of how many stories of, of abortion regret you've come across? The idea that they've debunked the idea of abortion post-abortion syndrome, a, a regret of abortion, mm. itself has been debunked with plenty of studies. And of course, they dismiss them. Yep. Also, well and truly established the link between abortion, surgical abortion and breast cancer. Um, they just dismiss that also because they don't have the facts mm -hmm. at all to refute those claims the mm. studies are overwhelming in both those areas especially in the abortion breast cancer area and we yet we have the health bodies the ama and the cancer council people and just dismiss those claims but they here's, know, the, here's the thing they about know it's true. they're lying here's the thing about this conversation is they actually don't want a debate they don't want to examine those studies. They just want to eliminate it and, and shriek in horror that there could be any suggestion of a negative side effect of, of abortion. They are so anti-information. They are so anti-choice, so anti-knowledge. They won't even let a woman have an ultrasound and see the picture of her baby so she can have informed consent before and yeah, the don't want conflict of interest the conflict of interest to have the person who profits from providing an abortion provide counseling on whether or not the woman should have abortion is is horrific you're from the financial services sector would you ever um go to a financial insolvency um provider for business coaching advice <laughs> i mean the guy That's is right. only going to profit when you fail that's um, right. When you, no, that's exactly right. It's just, it's horrific the lies conflict of interest. Abortion does, the, uh, look, the lies and conflicts of interest around abortion mm. have been there for 50 years. Uh, they're still there. They're only more manifest. Mm. People choose not to look. It's the emperor has no clothes type s situation. We are, most people don't want to know, don't want to, and they don't care. Again, like ancient Roman emperors, you know, give the people food and enter bread and entertainment well it's the same idea now most people don't know what to do and me, most even don't care they don't know uh, how to even think it. about it or talk about it no that's right they know no 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 facts praying outside of abortion clinics for many years i spoke literally spoke to thousands of women mm. and overwhelmingly in fact i don't know one that didn't say <coughs> pardon me uh, that didn't say um, I have no choice. Wow. Now, if this is about choice, why is that the case? And the reason they felt they had no choice is because they felt they had no support, no support from mum, dad, uh, husband, boyfriend, girlfriends, family, wider. Correct. Once they hear they had support from somebody, mm. even though they don't know us, I personally witnessed some 600 plus people change their mind. Wow. And keep their babies and happily keep their mm. babies. 
Right. I spoke to women who told me they, their doctors told them for medical reasons they had to have an abortion. I would refer them on to a friend of mine, an obstetrician who would look after them and only charge Medicare fees, no extra fees. Mm. And babies, many babies were born very healthy without any complications. Wow. There is a lot of misinformation and a lot yes. of lies around abortion. Yeah. There always has been. Yep. Bubble zones weren't about medical privacy. They were about secrecy for abortion operators. Protecting a profitable so, industry. That's exactly what it is. Abortion is the sacred cow. We want to build walls around it and protect it and keep everyone dumb and, uh, and supportive of it. Because yep. once people hear the facts, Dave, once people see what abortion is, they change their views. It's that's that right. simple. If you uh, dispute that, I would like to send you to a website called abortionprocedures.com. Uh, if you haven't seen it, um, go and watch the actual procedure of abortion. It's animated. It's uh, medical animations, um, scientifically, medically accurate, um, advised by former abortion providers themselves. Uh, and have a look at the three or four different short videos that are there. And uh, let's see if uh, you don't change your mind on abortion. But then be objective about it and show those videos to 10 other people who you believe are pro-choice and then ask them afterwards if they still support abortion without limits, without conditions, on demand for any reason. Because Ooh. at the end of the day, uh, you need to know what you're talking about. And all I'm advocating, no, it's not all I'm advocating. At the very least, we should have an honest discussion about it. What I'm advocating for is let's stop killing people. Uh, and I'm unapologetic yeah. about that, as if uh, we're talking about slavery again. Where would you be in the de debate about the Jewish Holocaust? Where would you be in the debate uh, about slavery of, of Africans brought overseas against their will? Well, I'll tell you where Anyone you would else? be. Yeah. And it's exactly um, where you would be on the position you take on abortion. Are you for human rights or not? Uh, so that's a challenge for anybody who doubts that we're talking about uh, pro-information. Go have a look at those videos for yourself and see if you maintain a pro-abortion position. Paul, any f yeah. final closing thoughts from you? Yes, the right to life is the fundamental right. If, if we don't have that right to life from conception to natural death, we have no rights. They are only rights that are bestowed on us by a, a, a totalitarian state if they, they start to become the determiners of what rights we have. And that's right. what's happening now mm. at both ends, in a, with abortion uh, for the unborn, with um, euthanasia for the elderly and terminally ill, and those with disabilities and, and anything else that people consider creates a life not worth living. That was a term used by the Nazis prior to World War I and the doctors that were tasked with implementing those, those programs. Yep. Life not worth living. That's what is considered of the unborn child here in Australia, yes. with legislation like this. And yep. most Australians, even without all that education, don't support later term abortion. There is more support, a majority of support for first trimester abortions. It's about 50-50 when you're talking about second trimester abortions. There are many people in Australia don't support it. If those people saw, as you pointed out, what abortion is and what it does, there'd be even less. Right. Why don't they tell people? Why don't the media, who lack any integrity at all overwhelmingly, the mainstream media, show abortions on television? Yep. Show people what happens in an abortion yes. and see what it comes out then. If it's a, just a clump of cells, it's going to be as controversial as showing a, a mole being removed or a biopsy yep. like we see on, yep. on the emergency TV shows all the time. Correct. Yeah. Why is it a problem? Why yep. won't you show it? They because show it's it. a living yeah. human, Paul. No, people will find out. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah, good on God. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Paul. God bless you too. And uh, we'll see you in the trenches. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, we've heard from a range of people, people that the New South Wales government does not want to hear from, has not asked for their opinion. Uh, they're just going to ram this down uh, the New South Wales voting public's throat if there's anything they have to do with it. Uh, I thank you for watching. I ask you now to share it, sign the petition, and call your local member and let them know this is a deal-breaker issue. You will vote against any member of parliament who 
supports abortion because we need to make sure in our generation that pro-abortion candidates are as rare as pro-slavery candidates. It's unconscionable that anybody could be so proud, proud to publicly support such a violation of fundamental human rights. It's unjust. It's oppression. And uh, we need to be involved in stopping it. Please go to my website, davepello.com. Sign up to receive newsletters from me. Undoubtedly, with videos like this, I'm going to be kicked off YouTube and Facebook pretty quickly. But I'll try and keep you in the loop via email once or twice, um, as often as I can. I really shouldn't promise a, a frequency. But um, do that. Go to the website. Sign up for the emails. And if you'd like to help me continue being this voice, I'm looking for more partners like you who will help raise this voice, spread this truth, for just $5 a month, you can make sure that more and more people hear about the emergency situations and get proper information and insights into what we should be talking about and what the government is hiding from us and trying to sneak through Parliament in the dead of night, undercover and without consultation. They work for you. And I want to just help you keep bringing, uh, keep bringing you information to make sure that you can hold those people that are meant to be working for you accountable. You can follow me for now on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R. -E it's a new app that doesn't de-platform conservative, so check that out. And make sure you leave a conversation. I'd love to hear from you um, in the comments. Join in the conversation beneath this article on my website, davepello.com. That's it for this episode, and uh, thank you for being the voice for those who have no voice.